Hi everyone, it's Toby. And finally, finally, we are going to do something so many people have asked me to do so many times. And that is sketching with a stick. So I have a few homemade sticks from an old and inaccurate wooden ruler, which I've just sort of whittled down to create very different points. And to go with my stick, we have some inks. So here is some Indian ink. Indian ink is a dipping ink, not safe for your fountain pens unless you want to ruin them immediately. That's because it's very viscous and it will immediately dry up and block your fountain pens. But because it's viscous, because it's quite a thick ink, it's perfect for dipping. Um, we also have here some white ink um, and there's the white ink. And then we have some orange and some scarlet. Now I'm going to be focusing on the black ink and then experimenting perhaps with some of these other colors at the end to see what happens. But this whole thing is an experimentation. I think this whole thing will be a steep learning curve for me. And I'm gonna try and do a relatively not so simple urban scene with it because it's relatively easy to imagine how to do this kind of technique on simple landscapes and on things like still lives. But how can we do it? Well, we need a bit more detail. Well, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is just try out our sticks. So I've got my fine and pointy stick. And the aim of this one, let's just do a little doodle. So the aim of this one is to be able to create those finer lines, but also have a bit more variation, a bit more sort of texture. And with it, hopefully we can create blacked areas. We can create really thin lines. We can see how long we can keep going with our stick. And quite a long time, actually. It holds a surprising amount of ink for a little bit of wood. Then I've got a couple of others. So this one's got a fine edge and a bold edge. So it's kind of like a homemade fude pen. So let's uh, let's add a banana here to our scene. And in doing so, we'll just try out the different marks we can make. So here we can go from very fine to very, very thick. So yeah, like a, a homemade fude pen, maybe a bit cheaper than a fude pen, but also a lot of fun. And again, huge amount of mark making opportunity. Then I've got some other sticks which have just got a bit more texture. So again, hopefully that just can find different ways to use these and create different sort of feels of mark. Again, from very fine to very bold. And one last one, again, with the same idea of having something a bit more textured that might lay down ink in a different way. So this one's very good, isn't it? At just laying down these really bold black marks. This one has a bit more of an unpredictable nature. And then this is my Fude pen and my fine liner. So there we go. That's our four pens that we are using today. Now with this ink as well, if you're quick, you can wash it in a rather lovely fashion. It's not a waterproof ink, though it does stain heavily. So it means that you tend to be able to keep the lines whilst also creating a lot of tone. And that's why I've got my brushes out as well, because we're gonna be playing with water to add some extra interest to our sketches. And with that, with our four pens, our brush ready, a little bit of experimentation, we can move on and start our urban sketch. So I'm gonna try and follow essentially my normal ink sketching processes and see how far they get me. So the first is of course, finding those shapes. I'm gonna use my fine liner for this. So if we just start with this house on the left, we can find it's got a square and a triangle. And their mark's gonna be way more loose in terms of you know, their variety than I normally would have. But we're gonna be able to hopefully do different things. Maybe this tree can just immediately be like a tonal mark, similar to if I was doing a pastel sketch and I wouldn't, I wouldn't outline objects, I would block them in. Here we can do both lines and hopefully some blocking in, some sort of tonal work rather than just pure sketching. But I also, I think, need to keep this nice and simple because, let's face it, my tools are not going to be super neat. They're not going to be able to achieve the mark making that a fancy fountain pen can. So we need to simplify. We need to focus on the important elements, the important shapes, and take it from there. Going OK so far, though, let's go into the distance now, where it's going to be a bit more challenging because we need to be more delicate. And actually, having said that, because I've just loaded up my pen, Maybe I shouldn't start in the distance. Maybe I should start closer where I'm going to produce a bolder line. So I'm going to instead jump across to this side and start the shapes over here. 
And when I've used up a bit of this ink, I can start going into the distance and being very delicate here to try and keep my line very faint because I don't want to overwhelm the sketch by having too much dark ink in the distance. So we've got this tree again, we can sort of block in like we talked about. And then we've got these overlapping roofs. So we'll bring those across. They kind of meet about here. And just to confuse the perspective a bit, this street is on a hill. So that's why things are feeling like they're on a hill, because they are on a hill. Um, and I just get the pavement edge in so that we can make sure we hit that feel right. Down here we've got another tree, so let's try our sort of blocking in techniques, just using the side of my stick now. And then we've got last bit for my fine liner, I think we've got this kind of uh, wall that comes round, breaks up a bit, comes round, and then even got a little car in the background. The car as well can just be abstracted into simple, simple shapes. And there we go. So I think, oh, one more line, let's get the bottom of this wall in. I think though, that is our scene taking shape. Now I'm going to do what I would normally do with soluble ink and just wash down some of this ink to start creating a sense of 3D shapes. So instead of just having lots of 2D shapes, if we add shadow, we keep that shadow fairly consistent, we can start suggesting a sort of light source coming from one side, or at least just a sense of this being 3D rather than just a 2D image. We don't need to do loads, but just enough that means we can come back in a moment and start adding a little bit more sort of bolder ink, bolder details into our sketch. I think that is already probably enough. So without waiting for it to dry, I'm going to come back in and we'll do some wet on wet India ink and let's see, let's see how bad an idea that is. I'm going to start somewhere risk free. I'm going to start with my few day pen now, creating some bolder lines, bolder textures. Um, and I'm going to start in these wet areas where we've got the trees because this is risk free because it's it is a more abstract area, and this is kind of what India ink is made for, creating these black, bold, exciting shapes. Back here we've got another tree. You can see how that ink just moves, how it creates lovely textures. There's dark areas here as well, so I'm going to use the flat edge of this, what I keep calling my Fudo pen, you know, my stick, and uh, I'm going to use the flat edge to get these darker areas, these darker, bolder lines in, like the edge of the pavement, the edge of the pavement down here as well. And hopefully what we're just doing is really quickly generating a lot more shape. Similarly here is dark and up here, we've kind of got this thick edge to the, the bottom of the roof. What we might want to do is just invent some details. So let's invent, for example, a suggestion of a window here, just to fill what's otherwise quite a blank space. Here we can add in, using again the flat edge of our, uh, of our <laughs> I keep wanting to say pen, our stick, we can add some suggestions of little bricks as well. And maybe just some little scratches for texture on the pavements to separate it out from the road as well. Anything else? Yes, let's do a couple more of our windows. And these are going to be wet on wet again, so they're going to soften out, a bit like watercolours, but it's a, a little bit more of a heavy medium, so I think often I find it doesn't quite spread as as much as a watercolour would, but it's still going to spread and soften quite a lot, this ink. And then coming along, and there we go. That is probably enough detail done with this. And again, what we can do, I'm just putting my, my, my thing in the water there. I'm going, going mad with all of this. What we can do is just use again, some water, much like we would with watercolours or soluble ink to come and just affect some of these shapes a little bit, move them around, blend them, blur them, create extra depth from in the shadows from where we've added this extra sort of tone, and even just use our brush then to move some of this colour around a bit more. And just like that, to be honest, our sketch is beginning more so than I thought it would, beginning to take a bit of shape, isn't it? It's beginning to sort of come together. We've got quite an effective representation of this scene. 
let's see what we can do with our funny little funny little pens just need to remind myself what they do so i'm going to try and do that somewhere safe again maybe just in the pavement so this one's our really bold pen so this is where we're going to start just really blocking in dark dark areas so this perhaps is best kept again for things like these windows dark areas maybe we want to create a bit of texture in the bricks maybe we want to suggest we've got this kind of um, manhole cover here so we can suggest that and again use that sort of scratchy nature of these sticks to create texture beyond the sort of simple and is there anything else i think perhaps that's all we need or want to do with our black ink so what i am going to do now is quickly rinse off <laughs> my my brushes my pens my sticks whatever we're calling them I've got a little towel which I use for all of my sort of messy applications of paint and things. So I'm just cleaning off the brushes as the brushes. I can't stop saying brushes. Cleaning off the sticks as best I can. And I, I think a touch of red could be really fun here. And this could be a dramatic mistake or it could be really fun. So, you know, you never find out without, without just going for it. And let's see what happens. Will this ink work the same? It's quite a lot more liquid. It's still an India ink, but it feels a lot more liquid to me. All I want to do is use these uh, little tips to create really specific highlights in a few places. So I'm not worried about what's really going on in the image. I kind of just want something interesting to happen to draw the eye around the image. So picking out little details here and there, um, and perhaps even just picking out some lighter pinkish tones in these, uh, in these uh, different bits of greenery, these different trees. And maybe a few little bricks or something like that but not too much don't want to do too much that is a very very pink isn't it very pink color now perhaps we should call that done perhaps we should call that done or perhaps we should do something fun and really experimental and see what happens so let's do the latter as i'm sure you were expecting because i've got this out i'm going to see what happens if we use a lot of this ink to kind of create a really different sky so we're going to have a orange sky and i think i think an orange sky amongst all this dark black ink will be different it'll be interesting and hopefully not a huge mistake but certainly something which will make the rest of that black ink really stand out you see hopefully you can see i'm trying to be quite specific with it i'm trying to place it in the uh the sort of correct locations. I'm being very lazy by taking it straight neat from the the ink pot here by the way so a better way to do it if you're taking time over your sketches is to get a, a mixing well and mix your um, your inks in with different amounts of water so that you can so sort of put a predictable amount of ink on the page you can see the the sort of concentration of ink rather than just like I'm doing here, being lazy and using neat ink. Equally, if you want to be lazy and use neat, neat ink, to be honest, that is how I normally use ink, because I like mixing on the page and I'm happy to put lots of water on the page before uh, doing anything else to allow that mixing to happen. All right, what I notice as we do that is we've got this kind of undefined area here, this kind of weird negative space. So I can just come back in and use my little uh, little sticks to just redefine a few areas so that we get this sensible feel this kind of feel that things are joined up and last but not least what I'm going to do tiny bit of this orange on my pen on my brush I lost all my words today splash that in and take a little look at it and I think I could keep touching things in I could keep fiddling I could keep reinventing shapes and making things darker and bolder but i think actually for, for a sketch where we experiment with sharpened sticks different inks and um, just having a play this is great so i'm gonna do my last bit with my ink my final bit with my ink which of course is going to be to pop my initials in the corner and hide my signature somewhere in the image and there we go we will call this Biggleswade in orange. So this scene is from Biggleswade. 
Now let me know, did you enjoy that? Have you tried this yourself? Are you going to try it yourself now? Or just try something else unconventional to see how it comes out. Do have a go, do have a play and see what happens if you sketch with sticks, with ink, with coffee, with something fun. And you can find more unconventional videos on my channel like the ones linked down below. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.